Before the extinction of the dinosaurs, one group held dominion as the largest animals to ever exist. They were the sauropods. These creatures were a remarkable group of herbivorous, long-necked dinosaurs whose unique adaptations enable them to persist as one of the most enduring dinosaur lineages in history. Dominating the Earth for nearly 150 million years, throughout the Jurassic, all the way to the end of the Cretaceous. Ever since their discovery in the early 19th century, the sauropods have been captivating minds and imaginations with their near unfathomable proportions, reaching sizes far larger than even that of the largest terrestrial species alive today, like the elephant or the giraffe. With many at the time of their discovery believing it was impossible for such an animal to even exist. Our understanding of these creatures has evolved significantly since they were first discovered. Many believe sauropods were predominantly semi-aquatic, with these views stemming from the perception that their massive sizes would have made it too challenging for them to support their own weight on land. However, as paleontology has advanced, we've been able to find more definitive evidence proving that not only were these animals not aquatic, they were perfectly adapted to live on land. But ever since their extinction 66 million years ago, no land animal has ever again achieved this colossal size. So in this video, we'll be going over why that's the case, alongside the question, could sauropods survive today? Let's start with how they reached these sizes. To begin, the long-necked dinosaurs had many evolutionary advantages that played a part in these feats. Laying eggs was one of those advantages, as it allowed these animals to get larger by removing the limitations associated with live birth. For example, in mammals, the mother needs to carry the developing offspring inside her body, which imposes constraints on both the size of the mother and the offspring. In contrast, by laying eggs, the mother can deposit the developing embryos externally, freeing her from the burden of carrying them inside her body. But if this were the only factor, then you would have had sauropod-sized dinosaurs all over the Mesozoic, as they all laid eggs. But that's not the case, so why is that? Well, that's where the sauropods' many other advantages come into play. For one, they had air sacs throughout their bodies, allowing for more efficient breathing and weight reduction. This weight reduction was extremely important for the animals, reducing both energy costs and the physical strains associated with their immense sizes. But this is really just scratching the surface, so let's quickly just list a few more. Their column-like legs, their quadrupedal lifestyle, and their long neck and tail. All these would come together to create the largest animals the world has ever seen. However, despite the fact that these animals were basically unkillable when fully grown, this strategy did bring with it some disadvantages that would eventually lead to their demise. Being a giant requires an astonishing amount of energy, with some estimates suggesting they needed to consume over 1,000 pounds of food daily. So once the asteroid impacted, these evolutionary advantages turned against the sauropods. The devastation caused by the KPG extinction led to the rapid depletion of Earth's plant life within days, making it impossible for these colossal creatures to sustain their massive sizes, eventually leading to the end of the sauropods and their roughly 150 million year reign. But the devastation marked by this event has since been able to recover, with the world once again full of life. So considering this, could these animals who have been long since dead be able to survive in our modern world? Now, for this we have to remember, the sauropod wasn't just a single species. This was a group of animals that were around for almost 150 million years. Therefore, some are going to have a harder time than others. With that in mind, let's go through some of the challenges they would have to face and kick out those who don't make the cut. One of the most critical factors to consider is food. Let's just take a second to look at how other dinosaur groups would handle this, then come back to the sauropod. For certain dinosaurs, especially large theropods, if put into the same situation, their extinction would be almost inevitable. Theropods, being primarily carnivores, would have required substantial amounts of meat to sustain themselves. However, in today's ecosystems, there are just no animals large enough to fulfill such a substantial dietary need. But luckily for the sauropods, they were herbivores so they really don't have to depend on other animals in the ecosystem to sustain them. Alright, so we have that down. Sauropods would have no problem finding food, right? Just look all around you, there are plants everywhere, so of course they'll be able to find something to eat. Not too fast. Throughout most of the Mesozoic, dinosaurs would have found themselves in a world full of plants much different than our own. During their time, the landscape would be dotted with cycads, ginkgos, conifers, and ferns, as these were the most common plant groups on Earth at the time meaning most of the sauropods had feeding strategies that relied heavily on these plants and really weren't adapted to eating the modern greenery we have today, at least until nearing the end of the Cretaceous, when the flowering plants began to take over. Though many of those older plant groups still do exist, their range is far limited compared to the extents during the Mesozoic. Thus, it would be much more likely that the sauropods of the late Cretaceous would have an easier time acquiring food, because their feeding strategies might have already included flowering plants in their own lives. 
So because sauropods, although late Cretaceous, would have a much easier time eating modern food, we're going to eliminate those that lived earlier. Let's take a look at a few members that this would knock out of the race. Firstly, Diplodocus, a sauropod of the late Jurassic period, who are most notable for their whip-like tails. These animals would have grazed on low-lying plants like ferns for most of their nutrition. But in our modern environment, most ferns have been outcompeted with the introduction of grasses, making the method this animal used to feed itself almost defunct. Another member that's going to be kicked out of the race is the Brachiosaurus. Living around the same period, this animal's adaptations made it one of the tallest dinosaurs ever. Standing around 40 to 50 feet tall, the Brachiosaurus was perfectly adapted to reach high into the treetops of the conifers and cycads, where they would rip the leaves right off their stems and possibly use rocks in their guts to help grind down the food. But the problem is, the foods they ate would have been much different than today, so they probably would have a hard time digesting them. And now let's take a quick look at some more of tonight's biggest losers. Let's try narrowing it down some more. Another factor to consider is the climate and environment. The Mesozoic era was characterized by warm and humid conditions, which were ideal for these massive creatures. Their large bodies were well suited to these conditions, as they could more effectively regulate their body temperatures. This adaptation likely helped them avoid overheating in the hot, tropical climates they inhabited. However, over the last 66 million years, Earth's climate has undergone significant changes. Fluctuations in temperature, rainfall patterns, and atmosphere composition would impact every aspect of the sauropod's life. In a deal with the cold, they would potentially need to increase their food intake to maintain their temperature and energy levels. In all likelihood, this would probably just limit their range to their warmer climates around the equator, where the conditions would be too different for them. This might end up with them following a migratory pattern similar to birds, bringing us into an entirely new problem that I'm not even sure I want to dive into. The idea of herds of dozens or maybe even hundreds of giant animals migrating over large distances and wiping out any plant life or really anything in their way would cause, to say the least, a lot of mayhem. Nevertheless, I don't believe the larger sauropods would be able to survive today, with their range already being restricted and with wild spaces getting smaller all across the world, adding a giant animal to the mix that would consume plants like no other would probably be too much for these ecosystems to handle, or at least make things much more difficult. So with the largest sauropods not being able to make it, some species this would affect would include the Argentinosaurus, a massive sauropod of the Lake Cretaceous that might have weighed anywhere from 60 to 100 metric tons. The amount of green space required to sustain an animal of this size is hard to come by, especially in a world as different as our own. Another animal this would affect is the Patagotitan, which would run into the same problems as the Argentinosaurus. So we've narrowed down our pool quite a bit. We're looking for sauropods that were smaller on average and lived in the Lake Cretaceous. Now, if you have your own pick, this is the time to comment below and explain why. But in any case, without further ado, I present to you my pick as a sauropod best suited for life in our modern world. The Saltosaurus, a relatively small sauropod compared to its larger relatives, estimated to have weighed anywhere from around 5 to 10 metric tons. This smaller size would be advantageous in the modern world as it would require less food and living space compared to the gigantic Argentinosaurus or Patagotitan. Despite their smaller size, Saltosaurus would have still been large enough to avoid predation from modern predators, which are generally smaller. They also had bone plates called osteoderms embedded in their skin that would provide additional protection. And lastly, they lived in herds, giving these animals the characteristics that would render them virtually invulnerable to predation with our modern ecosystems. But there would be some downsides for the Saltosaurus. Their eggs and young would be hard to protect. However, this was something they certainly had to deal with before their extinction, so something they could definitely handle today. In fact, living today might actually make things easier, as the youngest offspring would reach sizes too large for predators much faster. Additionally, Saltosaurus lived during the Lake Cretaceous period, which means it probably had some exposure to the early forms of flowering plants. This would allow Saltosaurus to diversify its diet to include these plants today. And that's why I believe the Saltosaurus would be able to survive. Finally, the sauropods are one of the most adaptable creatures to ever exist. And I have no doubt at least some of them would be able to survive today. Especially in tropical environments, where some people still think they actually might exist deep in Africa, which I'll be doing a video on soon, or in places like the Amazon. And speaking of that, after you're done with this video, go watch my video ranking all the animals in the Amazon. But finally, all of this is speculation, and it's pretty much impossible to know every factor for certain. So tell me if you agree, and remember, we're all here to learn and have fun. Let me know what sauropod you think could survive, if any. And as always, thank you for watching, and Jehona out.